Hi, we're continuing our video lecture series. This time we're going to talk about introduction to computer coding in Scratch. And this one's actually going to be a little bit funner. We're going to break away from the physics and Newton's laws of motion stuff for a while. And then we're just going to give you an introduction to how to code in Scratch. So here's here we are in our overview of um, our video series. So we've done an intro video and then three video lectures. And now we're on number four, introduction to computer coding in Scratch. You can find, if you've missed any of those, you can find the links for them just in the video description below if you wanted to go back and watch the other videos. So we're going to leave uh, this presentation and we're going to go pull up a web browser. Google Chrome is recommended and go to scratch.mit.edu. So I'll just pull up my Chrome browser, scratch.mit.edu. If you've never done this before, you're going to want to go click on this link up here that says join Scratch. If the font here is pretty is too small for you, I highly recommend watching this video on a computer because some of the fonts might be a little small. Watching on a phone probably won't do it justice. So you want to go here, join Scratch. You just create a username. It has to be a unique username. They recommend not using your real name for safety purposes. Um, then you can create your passwords here and then Follow the other steps to create an account. I've already got an account, so I'm going to go to sign in and I'm going to enter my username and password. And boom, I'm in Scratch. This, this is a coding environment. It's designed for children or for beginners at coding. And although it, it may be designed for children, it's actually quite fun and you can do some pretty advanced things in here. So it works really well as a, an introduction to computer programming. I'm going to go up here to create. What that's going to do is going to create a new project for me. So there are a couple of different areas. So this area is basically where we'll have the computer code end up. This area on the right where you see this little cat, this cat, they call him a sprite or basically a little character. And we're going to write computer code that makes this character do stuff. Over here on the left, you see these different tabs with different code. So they're categorized by motion, where you're making your guy move, by looks, where he's uh, saying something or changing his appearance. You can do sounds, you can do events, which is what we'll use a lot of, and control. So lots of good uh, categories over here. And then these are different blocks of code. Scratch makes it really easy to just drag and drop your block of code, whereas with a uh, um, Conventional computer languages, you're typing everything out and you can have a lot of errors or bugs. Scratch does a really good job of eliminating that kind of stuff, although weird things can still happen. Okay, so we're going to take our sprite. I'm going to show you some really basic commands. If I, there's this command that is move 10 steps. It's going to drag this from the motion tab. I'm going to just left click on it and drag it over to move 10 steps. So watch what this guy does when I double click on move 10 steps, he moves, actually just single click. So each time I click this piece of code, our little guy will take that action. Scratch comes with a, a, what's called a coordinate system. So if you've ever worked with like X and Y graphs, it's kind of the same thing. So here you see this X coordinate is minus 13 and this Y coordinate is 14. And basically if we went to, if I went in here and typed in zero and enter for the X coordinate and zero here for the Y coordinate, that basically puts our guy right at the center of the screen. And this will be important as we start programming in position, for example, like we learned about in our last video lecture. So when I left click and drag this guy around, you can see that his X position and his Y position will change. So that's what these mean. This is our X position and Y position. So I drag him clear down. Um, you'll see he's kind of moving around. Okay, so I can have him move 10 steps. That's easy enough. So the point of computer coding is you can do a series of steps, a series of simple steps, but you can do them all quickly. Um, the computer can execute them very quickly. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to go to this uh, events, I'm going to drag this event over. So when I click the green flag, that's when he will move, when my, my sprite or my character or my object will move 10 steps. So here I can go over to this environment, I can find the green flag. Every time I click that, he's going to move 10 steps. 
And as you can see, our x coordinate or our x position is changing each time I click that. If I want to look at this on a bigger screen, I can go to this full screen control tab and I can see this in a much bigger screen. So nothing too exciting so far. So if I click stop, that will kill my code. I can click this full screen control button again and go back where I can see my code window. So uh, one basic uh, computer programming construct is called a loop. So if I want, instead of clicking every time, if I want my guy to move gradually across the page, instead of having to click every time, let's say I want him to do this 10 times, I can introduce a loop and I'll get this repeat loop. So this will repeat 10 times. I'll put my move in there. <clears throat> so what this is gonna do is when I click the flag, it's gonna move 10 steps and it's gonna move 10 steps a total of 10 different times. So overall it's gonna move 100 steps. So let's just watch what happens. And our guy slides across the page 100 steps at a time. And you can see that he's going in the X direction. So if I set him back to zero in the X direction and if I click this, he goes a total of 100 steps. So easy enough. Um, so one thing we can do here is we could set up some code. I'm just gonna, if I just break this code apart and move it over to the side, it kind of just goes away in the garbage. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna set up a code, like if I'm coding a video game and I want this character to respond to my moves, I can use this other, uh, under the control category here, this other computer construct, which is an if statement. So I can say, if I'm doing a certain thing, then um, this guy will do a certain thing. So I'm gonna get an if statement and I'm gonna say if I press a certain key, so this is on the sensing tab, so this is where you can give your computer program some inputs like from your keyboard. So if I'm gonna say if I'm pressing the right arrow key, then what do I want this guy to do? Well, I want him to move to the right. So let's go back to, I think this would be in motion. And instead of just this move 10 steps, I'm going to find this change X. We talked about position when we were talking about Newton's laws of motion. Um, I'm gonna go, I wanna change my X position by 10. So X goes from left to right. So if I'm pressing the right arrow, I wanna add to my X position by 10, 10 steps or 10 moves. I want to do the same thing for going left. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hover over this whole block of code and I'm gonna go right click on it and then go to duplicate. And what does that do? That makes a, an exact block of code. Instead of, for, uh, instead of doing right arrow, I'm gonna do left arrow. And instead of changing it by positive 10, I'm gonna go change it by negative 10. Okay. So we'll have to build this whole thing, a series of if statements to get our four different directions. I'm going to copy this again. This time, instead of left and right, I'm gonna go up. Now Y, if you notice, is when we go up and down. So notice when I go up and down, notice our Y position is changing here. So instead of changing X by 10, I wanna change Y by 10 when I'm pressing the up arrow. And I can duplicate that whole block and attach it here. And now I wanna say if I'm pressing the down arrow, I'm gonna change Y. Instead of positive 10, I'm gonna go negative 10, which means a downward direction. Okay, so what happens here is um, when I click the flag, either here or here, You'll see, if you, if you watch closely, you'll see this whole block of code be highlighted in yellow. It's super quick, computers work so fast. So what happens is uh, my computer code executes so fast, faster than I can actually push the button. So this code actually doesn't really work very well. But what I can do is I can put this in a loop. So if I go back over here to control, I wanna grab this loop, this forever loop. So then I'm gonna take this whole block and stick it in there. So when I click, it's gonna be looping over the entire time. 
So now it's looping. It, it will go, it'll enter this block of code, it'll execute all of these commands, this command, this command, this command, and then it's gonna keep looping back. So when I get down, you see this little arrow at the bottom, that means the computer is gonna go through and execute this one line at a time, and when it gets to the bottom, it's gonna go back up. What do we see with our little guy over here? Well, he's not doing anything because I'm not pushing buttons. So uh, if you've replicated this code on your own screen, you can start doing this now. So I'm pushing left arrow, right arrow, I'm pushing up arrow, down arrow, and you notice this guy is just floating around responding to the different commands that I can take. So Scratch is really cool for doing this kind of stuff. Makes it really fun to code simple little video games. You can probably find some much better YouTube videos than this one teaching you how to do game coding. So this is basically our introduction to Scratch. So after this, we're gonna start joining our coding with Newton's Laws of Motion, and we're gonna start uh, using some of these things that we've learned to do a physics-based simulation. But I'm gonna close out here by going back to full screen mode, and you can just see if I push all the different arrows, my guy is moving around. So pretty cool, pretty good introduction to some basic coding things like loops, and if statements and sensing. So thanks for this video. Tune in for the next one. We're gonna join this with the things that we've learned about physics. Before I leave, actually, I, I wanna go here. This is where I can save my computer program. So I can just call this a scratch motion or something. And if I, and then I can pull this up under uh, here when I go to my stuff. I will see that this scratch motion program is saved there in my stuff, and I can open it up by going see inside, I can get back to where I was. So it's really important if, you, if you've been working really hard on your code, you wanna make sure you're giving it a file name, and then coming here when you're done and just going save now to save it so you can come back and start working from there later.